Montreal is a really large city, but like all large cities, it has some very small states. Steve, for instance, like Prince Edward Street, which is only four blocks long, ending in a cul de sac. No one knew Prince Edward Street as well as this Pierre Dubin. For Pierre has delivered milk to the families on the street for 13 years now. During the past 15 years, the horse which drew the milk wagon used by Pierre was a large white hound named Joseph. In Montreal, especially in this part of Montreal, which is very French, the animals, like children, are often given the names of sins. When the big white hound first came to the provincial milk company, he didn't have a name. They told Pierre that he could use the white house head force. Pierre stroked the softness of the house next. He stroked the sheen of its appendix belly and he looked into the eyes of the horse. This is a kind horse, a gentle and a faithful horse. And I can see a beautiful spirit shining out of the eyes of the horse. I will name him after good St. Joseph, who is also kind and gentle and faithful and a beautiful spirit. Within a year, Joseph knew the mill rule as well as Pierre. Pierre used the boards that he didn't need reins. He never touched them. Each morning, Pierre arrived at the stable of the provincial mill company at 5 o'clock. The wagon would be rolled and Joseph hitched to it. Pierre would call Bong Chu Jie Jie Mi as he crammed into his seat and Joseph would turn his head and the other drivers would smile and say, that's the horse would smile at Pierre. Then Jack, the foreman, would say, All right, Pierre, go on. And Pierre would call softly to Joseph, Ajong, Monami. And this appendix combination would stalk partly down the street. The wagon without any direction from Pierre would roll tea box down St. Catherine Street. Then Tom right to box along Rosarine adjunct. Then left for that was Prince Edward Street. The house would stop at the first house, allow Pierre perhaps 30 seconds to get down from his seat and put the bottom of bill at the front door, and would then go on. Skipping to house and stopping at the dirt, and so they went down the street. Then Joseph, still without any direction from Pierre, would turn around and come back along the other side. Yes, Joseph was a smart horse. Pierre would board at the stable of Joseph's guild. I never touch the reins. He knows just where to stop. Why? A bright man could handle my roof with Joseph pouring the wagon. So it's been for many years where the same. Pierre and Joseph both grow all together. But get worried. Not suddenly. Pierre hugs worry mustache was poor right now. And Joseph did leave his knee so hard. Or else he has as much. Shark the four men off the stable, never noticed that they were but getting on until Pierre appeared one morning carrying a heavy walking stick. Hey Pierre, maybe you got to go, eh? Mais oui, Jacques. Pierre said a bit uncertainly. One grows old, one's legs get tired. You should teach that horse to carry the milk to the front door for you. Jack told him. He does everything else. 
Happy Annual Everyone for the 40 families. He served on Prince Edward Street. The cooks knew that Pierre could neither read nor write, so instead of following the usual custom of leaving a note in an empty button, if an additional course of meal was need, they would sing out when they heard the rumble of his wagon wheels over the cobbled streets. Bring an extra quart this morning, Pierre. Do you have company for dinner tonight? He would call back Gary. Pierre had a remarkable memory. When he arrived at the stable, he is away remember to tell Chuck. The Paquins took an extra quart this morning. The Lemoines bought a pint of cream. Chuck would know this thing in a little book. He is away carries. Most of the driver has to mark out the weekly bins and collect the money. But Chuck, liking Pierre, has a way to him for this task. All Pierre had to do was to arrive at 5 in the morning, walk to his wagon, which was away in the same spot at the curb, and deliver his meal. He returned some two hours later, got down stiffly from his seat, called the cherry to shark, and then lime slowly down the street. One morning, the president of the provincial milk company came to inspect the early morning deliveries. Shark pointed the air out to him and said, Watch how he talks to that horse. See how the horse listens and how he turned his head for it, Pierre. See the look in that horse's eyes. You know, I think those two share a secret. I have often noticed it. It is as though they both sometimes chuckle at us as they go off on their route. Pierre is a good man, Monsieur President, but he gets old. Would it be too bold of me to suggest that he be retired and be given perhaps a small pension? He added anxiously. But of course, I know his record. He has been on this route now for 30 years, and never once has there been a complaint. Tell him it is time he rested. His salary will go on just the same. But be any fool to retire. He was panic-stricken and the troll of not driving to save every day. We are two old men. Let us wear out together. When Joseph is ready to retire, then I, too, will quit. Shah, who was a kind man, understood there was something about Pierre and Joseph which made a man smile tenderly. It's what as told is drew some hidden strength from the author. When Pierre was sitting in his seat, and when Joseph brought his chest to the wagon, neither seem old. But when they finished their work, then Pierre would lamp down the street slowly, seeming very old indeed, and the horse heads would drop and he would walk very wearily to his stall. Then one morning, Shark had dreadful news for Pierre when he arrived. It was a cold morning and still pitch dark. The air was light ice white. That morning and the snow which has fallen during the night glistened like a million diamonds piled together. Shark says, Pierre, you are horse. Joseph did not wake up this morning. He was very old. Pierre, he was 25 and that's it like being 25 for a man. Yes, yes. I am 75, and I cannot see Joseph again. Of course, you can. He is over in his stall, looking very peaceful. Go over and see him. Pierre took one step forward, then turned. No, no, you don't understand, Jacques. Jacques clapped him on the shoulder. We'll find another horse. Just as 
good as Joseph. Why? In among you, teach him to know your root as well as Joseph did well. The root in V A I stop him. For years, V A has worn a heavy cap, the peaks of which came low over his eyes, keeping the bitter morning white out of them. Now Shark looked into V A eyes, and he saw something which startled. Him. He saw a dead, lifeless look in them. The eyes were mirroring the grief that was in the air hers, and he saw it was as though his hers and so has died. Take today off, Pierre. Shark said, but already Pierre was hovering off down the street. And had one been near, one would have seen tears streaming down his cheeks, and have heard half smart chop. Pierre walked to the corner and stepped into the street. There was a warning yell from the driver of whose truck that was coming fast, and there was the scream of beg. But Pierre apparently heard neither. Five minutes later. And Amber and Diver says, "He's dead. He was killed instantly." Chuck and several of the Milwaukee divers had a light, and they looked down at the still figure. I couldn't help it. He walked right into my talk. He never saw it. I guess why he walked into it as though he was blind. The ambulance doctor bent down. Blind? Of course, the man was blind. See those cataracts. This man has been blind for five years. You say it worked for you? Didn't you know he was blind? No. No. None of us knew. Only one knew. A friend of his named Joseph. It was a secret. I think just between those two.